before the main video starts, I thought I'd give you a brief introduction to let you know what the video does and doesn't show. All the video is, is sort of a, a look at my experiences with Miracast on the AOC i2473PWY. Now, as a monitor, this is quite a good monitor, as you'll see from the review. Um, the Miracast capability, I don't think the monitor itself has any intrinsic problems, it just happens that I don't have any devices which are compatible to Miracast. So, if you do take away something from this video, let it be not that the this monitor has sort of a faulty Miracast chip or anything like that, but just that Miracast isn't as widely compatible as you might think, and that plenty of devices that you'd think might work with it, that work with MHL for example, don't. This video takes a look at the Miracast capabilities of the AOC i2473PWY. Um, I've already spent about an hour and a half trying to get this to work and uh, without any success at all. I've tried it on a Motorola Moto G, I've tried it on a Google Nexus 7, both of them running the latest version of Android KitKat which is 4.42 I believe at the moment. Um, so yeah, basically Google decided to remove the functionality that lets you add a wireless display, so that's a no-go with those ones, so I thought I'd uh, try some computers here. So to actually activate Miracast, the first thing you want to do is press the auto button at the uh, control base of the monitor and then cycle to where it says Miracast there. And this basically starts um, a long waiting process where it says Miracast mode waiting, which it'll do for about uh, 20 seconds, I believe. There we go. And then there's another loading screen to look forward to after that, which has these nice little animated blue blobs. This takes a bit of time as well. And when that's finally done, it says there, Miracast display it gives you the SSID of the monitor and the pin and status searching for peers. So basically the monitor's there, ready to go, ready to connect to uh, anything wirelessly using Miracast. So here we have another monitor um, connected to my my main desktop computer down there. And in theory, you should be able to connect to the uh, monitor wirelessly with Windows 8.1 by going on devices in this charms bar thing here. Uh, then clicking project. And then there's supposed to be an option which lets you add wireless display, but that's not there. Um, and I believe that's because my desktop isn't using an Intel uh, wireless adapter, or isn't using the right version of something. So, basically that's a no-go with that one as well. So here I have a Dell Inspiron laptop which does have the correct wireless network adapter and drivers. So I'll just open that up. And again, hover over the charms bar on the right hand side. Click on devices. Uh, project. And here it does have an option, add a wireless display. So it says here, searching for devices. Seems to have found the uh, monitor, although it's calling it a television here. Never mind, I'll let it off. I'll just click that. Follow any instructions on your... Okay. Connection established. Uh, now this... Okay, it's doing something. 
looking a bit more hopeful this time. Waiting for connection, it says. Searching for peers, so it's again seems to be searching for devices, even though it should have probably connected already. Um, well, yes, the monitor screen of the laptop even keeps on flicking on and off, which is uh, interesting. Uh, so let's see it. Projectors, so it's not a TV or a monitor now, it's a projector. Not connected. Okay. So I'll go back onto the desktop. Maybe try this again. Devices. Project. Ah, here, it's listed here and it says couldn't connect. So I'll click there and I'll try and connect again. It says waiting for network address on the monitor now. Connection established. And the screen's flicked off, the monitor's flicked off. Not much happening yet. Now again the monitor says searching for peers, which is not good at all. And the laptop screen has some black bars around it. The controls notably more laggy, or well, they were until it's now reverted to its usual state. And it's basically lunchtime now. I've already spent about two hours trying to get everything to work. I'll have another video for you if I can actually get this mirror casting to work. But as you can see, it's not always as uh, straightforward as the manufacturers make it out to be. And here we are again to try and connect the Dell laptop up to the AOC i2473PWY using Miracast. So again, hover over the charms bar, go to devices, project, and click on the screen. It says connecting on the laptop, connection established on the monitor. And this time it's actually displaying something. Um, I mean, well, there are two things uh, I noticed straight away. First of all is that the, the mouse movement is extremely laggy on the, uh, on the monitor. It's actually quite difficult to, to control the thing. But um, from experience with wireless display technologies before, that's something I've come to expect, really. Um, the other issue is that it doesn't seem to be displaying uh, the full full HD resolution. Now, it's possibly because the, the laptop itself isn't a full HD display. It um, is only 720p. So I wonder if I can configure the screen resolution to... Yeah, it's displaying there 1280 by 768 and that's the highest it will go, unfortunately. So having done some research on the internet, I discovered that the reason that the resolution wasn't set right and one of the reasons the display was feeling very laggy was that um, I had an old version of the Intel wireless display drivers installed on the laptop. So I'm just running the Intel um, update tool to make sure the graphics drivers and the wireless drivers are all up to date and hopefully that will let me enable 60 hertz. 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution. Well, I've installed the new drivers and there's a bit of good news and a bit of bad news. The good news is that it is actually running at 60 hertz now, the screen, rather than 30 hertz, so it's a bit less laggy. Um, but unfortunately, the resolution is still exactly the same. Um, before anyone mentions it, I have tried running it so rather than in clone mode as it 
is at the moment with the laptop and the display. I've tried running it so only the monitor is actually displaying anything and you still don't get full HD as an option. I've also tried setting a custom resolution in the um, Intel control panel and it's telling me that there isn't enough bandwidth um, even for a full HD resolution at 30Hz. So for whatever reason um, I'm going to assume the monitor is capable of displaying Miracast content of uh, full HD 60Hz because um, that's what AOC tells me but let's just uh, assume that the laptop's at fault here. Anyway um, I'll show you a few things using Miracast just to show that it does actually work. Um, so it's good for sort of general desktop tasks, uh, for example browsing the internet, um, everyone's favourite site here, YouTube. I'll open a video, I don't know which of these I can actually bear to watch. Um, Hmm. Okay, after much deliberation I've decided that I can bear to watch the Doctor Who Series 8 2014 Rain trailer. Um, now I know this won't be to everyone's taste and I know not all of my audience are from the UK or from countries that are particularly interested in Doctor Who but this is just to show that you can watch YouTube videos in 1080p even though the monitor at the moment won't be actually displaying that resolution. Um, so here we go. And that sound you hear is also coming from the uh, monitor's 7 watt speakers there, which is good to see, or good to hear I should say. There we go. And as I've said, the monitor is running at 60 hertz, um, but because it's a wireless signal, there is quite considerable latency still. So you can you can definitely feel it when you even when you're just moving the mouse around on the desktop, it, it really does feel really very sluggish. Um, obviously, some users will be more sensitive to this than others. One thing I found quite interesting, because I have tested dis wireless display technologies before, is that it can actually make, make use of the main system graphics card, or at least it can on this, this laptop. It's got a um, an NVIDIA... Uh, I can't remember the exact model off the top of my head, but anyway, it's got a uh, built-in NVIDIA GeForce graphics card of some description. So here's a benchmark of Unigine Valley, which wouldn't really work at all on the integrated uh, graphics card, but fortunately it uh, uses the NVIDIA dedicated GPU. And the nice thing about this is you don't have to interact with it, it's just a rolling demo, um, and for that sort of thing I find Miracast absolutely fine. Obviously it would be nice if it was in full um, the full resolution of the screen, it does look a bit uh, sort of soft and you might say blurry, but um, I'm, I'm guessing that's down to the laptop rather than the monitor. So you can see it's running, there we are, so it's a GeForce GT 750M, so at the moment it's running sort of around 50 frames a second, and the monitor's displaying that in all its glory.
And this runs for a few minutes, so I'm just going to stop it there because I don't want to bore you to death. Just wanted to show that it does actually work. Um, next, I'm going to show you a game called Warframe, which is a game I'll have to interact with. Um, just to, to show you how how the um, latency might affect actual gameplay. This isn't my laptop, as you can probably tell. It's actually uh, my girlfriend's laptop, so bear with me. So this game uses um, DirectX 11, so again it's a, it's a good thing to have the de dedicated graphics card in play there. And again, I, I would have liked to be able to show you um, Miracast on my main desktop PC. I could uh, show you some Battlefield 4 or something like that, but unfortunately I don't have the right uh, hardware to actually use Miracast on that. Just got to type in my password. Just loading now. So the interesting thing is, even on the laptop itself, there is a bit more lag than usual. Um, I don't know if that's just because it's displaying a non-native resolution on on the screen itself, or it's something to do with the uh, extra processing involved with Miracast. But it, even even then, the uh, the laptop screen is uh, a fair bit more responsive than the, the monitor. So I'll just uh, quickly open up a, a map, he says. You'll just have to imagine in, in your head that this is running in its uh, full HD resolution and you can actually see all of the game on the screen. And that isn't the case, unfortunately. Yeah, so... It might not be very obvious on the video, but interacting with the game world is, is pretty difficult, to be honest. Um, I won't blame my death on that, but uh, what I will say is I don't think many people are going to have very enjoyable gaming sessions over Miracast. To be honest, I've had enough already, but never mind. Yeah, it's probably not so easy to see on the video, but it is... It's, some people would call it unplayable. Unfortunately, my camera battery did actually cut out there, so uh, it cut uh, the gaming short a bit, which is probably a relief to many of you. Um, now, I know a lot of this video is focused on gaming and latency, and that's not really what Miracast's for. I mean, you can see that, to some extent, it does what it says on the tin. It projects content from one device wirelessly to the display, and outputs audio at the same time. It is a shame that I couldn't have the full resolution running. Um, I'm not sure exactly why. Um, again, I think it's probably down to the laptop rather than the monitor. And just one little last thing I'm going to show you, because I know I've talked about latency a few times in this video. If you go onto the OSD of the monitor, and we have a separate video going through all of these functions, so make sure you watch that if you're interested. If 
we go onto the OSD setup menu, there's, there's a bit of corruption there. That's another thing I've noticed. Uh, very occasionally the, the screen seems to go corrupted, but it, it, it lasts for generally less than a second. So it's not massively distracting, but it, it is something I've noticed. Um, anyway, the Miracast update function is an interesting one. Something on, and then what happens is you get a blank screen, Miracast mode waiting. Yes, uh, Miracast certainly isn't for impatient people. Again, this generally lasts for about uh, 10 to 20 seconds. And then there's a further delay to wait for these nice blue blobs. And remember, you have to do this every time you want to connect uh, the display using Miracast. This is a sort of wait you have to put yourself through. So yeah, it's basically a firmware update feature. Um, now I'm just going to follow the instructions there. Um, so, associate Wi-Fi, okay. So, basically, you connect directly to the monitor using your Wi-Fi connection. So, here you can see the monitors available. There. Connect. And once this connects, um, you have to, as it says, Point your browser to that IP address. Okay, so it's connected. So I'll point my browser to that IP address. There we go, I've done this before, so it's there. So you can see a couple of different options you can configure um, for the monitors Miracast. Um, the interesting one is latency, because um, you know that's what I've been talking about for pretty much half of this video. By default, it's set to movie mode, um, and I did actually switch this to gaming mode for the uh, video, which actually seemed to reduce the latency slightly, which um, which is a good thing, I guess. But even after doing that, I mean, there's not much else you can change. But even after doing that, it's um, you know it's it's good for things you don't really have to interact too heavily with um, but for gaming definitely stick to the good old cable instead now that's pretty much concludes the video um, I'm sorry if this has been long and boring it's unlike anything I've ever done before um, but I just really wanted to give you a, a good taste of what to expect from Miracast and also just to you know alert you to some of the issues you might have 